So I've tried a few games in the Pimax Crystal now using the iTracked based dynamic foveated rendering using a couple of different methods which I'll get into a little bit later on in this video. But for anybody very quickly, anybody that doesn't know what dynamic foveated rendering is, um, I'm sure most of you do, but you have fixed foveated rendering in some headsets and Quest 2 uses this in some games as well, where anything within the center of the display will be rendered to high resolution and then it will gradually decline or have a sharp cut off in resolution towards the edges of the display. But iTrack based dynamic foveated rendering works a little bit differently because any headset that has eye tracking included, it can have this feature where it basically just moves that mask around based on where you're looking. So you'll still have a very clear picture in the center of where you're looking, no matter where it is within the display, and the periphery of that will slowly, either slowly drop off in resolution, or it will be a sharp decline in resolution. And that's basically what it is. And the Palmax Crystal does come with eye tracking, and therefore it is capable of eye tracked based dynamic foveated rendering and that's what I've been getting into these past few days and the first one I went into was Elite Dangerous. I made a video on that, that's my last video on this channel and it was great, it made a difference. You can look at the numbers in that video and you could probably say that it improves performance anywhere between sort of 10% up to maybe up to that 30% mark as well in some areas. So dynamic foveated rendering definitely has a benefit and it really does work in the Palmax Crystal. I'm really impressed with it because there's not many headsets that I've tried that actually utilize that foveated rendering. I tried the PSVR2 RAM Paradise to Keys House and I don't know, you now, I think there were titles that I tried around there that did utilize the foveated rendering but you don't really know what you're getting because if it's working perfectly then it should be invisible but you do get that performance increase but as I've mentioned I've tried multiple other titles using dynamic foveated rendering within the crystal since Elite Dangerous and it's really a case of me just trying to get my head around the implementations of this and there are really two different methods so the first method which I used in Elite Dangerous and was one which I sort of almost stumbled across in the end honestly after trying to get this to work for an hour or so was where you activate eye tracking in the Pimax Play software and then you enable fixed foveated rendering within the Pimax Play software and incidentally, by the way, before I get into this, I will probably provide some kind of guide into all of this, but I think they'll probably have some updates to the software anyway. So I don't know if that will be redundant or not by the time it gets sort of a general release, um, the eye tracking stuff. So I don't want to do that too early, but I will provide some kind of a tutorial or something like that at some point on the channel. But basically within the Pimax Play software, I just activated eye tracking, then, um, turned fixed foveated rendering up to the maximum level. Now, whenever you do that, it then automatically uses the eye tracking and creates sort of dynamic foveated rendering based on where you're looking. It doesn't do fixed foveated rendering, which is the other kind. Um, but then you also need to download the Pimax XR software, which is all of this is sort of in a, in a kind of tutorial on the website, on the Pimax website, but I'm hoping they're gonna streamline all of this a little bit more as time goes on. And then you can just run Steam VR, run Elite Dangerous, and the as long as you've got a checkbox um, initiated within the Pimax XR software, then Elite Dangerous will automatically work with the eye tracks based dynamic foveated rendering. I know it's, it sounds a little bit long winded actually when I put it like that, but it's relatively simple once you know what you're doing. And the problem is for a couple of hours, I really didn't know what I was doing. So I sort of fumbled my way through all the software and I actually missed the checkbox in Pimax XR. That was really the root of my problem that I had. And once I'd done that, then I started Elite Dangerous just using the usual method. It started Steam VR using Pimax XR as the open X XR um, integration and from that point on everything worked pretty pretty good really and um, yeah the dynamic foveated rendering works it really does and you don't notice any difference now I had it on the maximum setting which is the most aggressive you can be with it in the Pimax Play software and if I look at, at one side of the display um, just using eyes, you know, not turning my head or anything like that, then you can notice a very slight amount of sort of fluttering in the on the pixels on the on the very edge of your peripheral view. 
And I thought, okay, so that means it's working. But unless I really looked for it, it wasn't distracting at all. Um, and I'd go for even more aggressive kind of uh, variations on this dynamic foveated rendering if I had the choice. And like a, a, a slow fade cross off. And I don't know about all the implementations of dynamic foveated rendering. And people have mentioned in my comments actually that there are different ways of doing all of this stuff. And some can be more beneficial than others because this kind of implementation that I tried in Elite Dangerous was a very sharp cut off but I didn't notice it, but that also meant that I had to have a very wide periphery of clear image, and then it would have the sharp cut off of the, the resolution, which you can only really see on the, on the uh, footage afterwards. I didn't notice too much other than if I really, really looked for it, this very kind of fluttering of the uh, pixels and that kind of stuff. But the second method of using dynamic foveated rendering within the Palmex Crystal is to use uh, OpenXR directly. And the way this works is something like in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which I went into. And what you can do, you can pair Pimax XR with the eye tracking enabled with OpenXR Toolkit, and then Microsoft Flight Simulator has direct OpenXR integration. So you can just activate VR in Microsoft Flight Simulator, make sure you've got the Pimax XR functioning correctly with the eye tracking, and then within OpenXR Toolkit, once again, I know this sounds a little bit long winded, but it's really not that difficult, but Eventually, I will do a guide on this as well because I know people will uh, want to know this stuff, and rather than fumbling their way through, they'll uh, they'll just want to take a little bit of a shortcut, and I don't blame them. But um, yeah, once I've got it working in Microsoft Flight Simulator, the OpenXR Toolkit integration, you have to activate. Uh, fixed foveated rendering then based on eye tracking within the menu system of OpenXR Toolkit and then you have various options what you can do. So in Microsoft Flight Simulator it's got really good integration with eye tracking and you can actually vary the amount um, the actual circles as they go in so you can have a smaller circle so the very center of your view the inner view is really really sharp but also very small and then you can have variations of the outer circles as well and you can change you have full control over how much you want the resolution to drop off on each of these sections so you can experiment with that experiment with higher resolutions within microsoft flight simulator and I did uh, sort of plan on a side-by-side -side video, and I might show a little bit of that now, but I'm not going to publish that video because I'm still getting my head around some of the capturing of, of this um, when I'm not using the Steam VR mirror. So the footage wasn't particularly good, although I can confirm that in that side-by-side -side footage, when I had dynamic foveated rendering enabled and when I had it disabled in a you know the same area new york city i was flying around and i was getting anywhere between sort of you know five to up to i would i would say up to 10 frames improvement between five and 10 frames improvement with the dynamic foveated rendering enabled so it's got definite benefits and it really does work i mean you can with open xr toolkit you can actually reduce all of this stuff and really dial it in if you want to do that but you'll get a really big benefit with this as well so when you actually crunch the numbers you're getting up to like 20 percent, 30 percent sometimes improvement i mean it's it's really crazy and that might only translate to something like you know five to ten frames sometimes it doesn't sound like a lot but it makes a massive difference and it really does and anybody that you know you if you know the frame rate of certain things then you know that that kind of 20 percent improvement can make a big difference in some areas the one thing i've not really managed to get working yet is with open composite now i don't know if this is just impossible at the moment or if that will ever be possible because in something like elite dangerous for example you have the option of rather than using steam vr you can use open composite and then you can have an integration with open xr toolkit as well and it should sort of feed into pimax xr but when i do it that way the eye tracking within open xr toolkit doesn't appear to be available and I don't know enough. I'm, I'm still learning as I go with all this. So perhaps somebody in comments can, can let me know where I'm going wrong with that. But I can do fixed foveated rendering in uh, OpenXR Toolkit. But I don't get the option for eye tracking for some reason in Elite Dangerous. Which is a different method. And it's a method which I will be interested to try 
based on how I had this sort of more direct implementation by using Pimax XR and then into Steam VR and then Elite Dangerous. It would be good to go from Pimax XR, um, Open Composite, Open XR Toolkit, you know, all of these different methods are absolutely mind boggling, really, when you start to think about them. But it will be interesting to try them anyway and give some numbers and see how frame rates can be improved by using all these different things. And really that leads me on to my final, I guess, final point. A lot of this that I'm doing at the moment in the past few days has been trial and error. I'm, I'm really interested to get this dynamic foveated rendering working in this headset because it does provide significant improvements in frame rates, frame timings, and all of this stuff. And it's just working out which titles I can use with it and which titles I can't um so yeah i'll probably leave it there for this one because um i've got a lot more to say i've got a lot more i want to dive into with this and hopefully you know i'll get a little bit of a clearer idea because you can't seem to find this information on on certain titles of which are compatible or which are not and hopefully there will be more information from Parmax on all of this stuff but also i think when this you know, this gets in the hands of more people, there will probably be some kind of community uh, developed spreadsheet or something like that of all of these titles which, are, you know, work with dynamic foveated rendering. One of the things with this headset is it's very high resolution. Unfortunately, you also need a very powerful GPU in order to run that across the whole display at that resolution. If we can get some kind of implementation across the board of dynamic foveated rendering, then this will suddenly become compatible with much lower end GPUs in some ways. And I know there's limits on that, but it's an interesting thing to think about, especially if we can get some kind of consensus on dialing in all of these different things, the resolution, the um, the, the gradual cutoff on the, the foveated rendering areas and stuff like that, and just some more clarification on really the types of titles that are compatible with it. So um, I've not looked into it enough. I don't know really if there's just a blanket statement on which are compatible and which are not. But when I've reached out to Pimax, they've said that certain titles have not been tested, so they can't give an answer on whether they're compatible or not. So it's trial and error for me at this moment in time, but I'm really enjoying it and I'll carry on with it. And that's it. This was a longer video than I expected. I'll probably trim it down quite a lot because I've rambled on. But I do want to um, do these kinds of videos where I'm just sort of rattling off some thoughts on certain things as well. Because, um, yeah, I'm finding this headset really, really interesting. But I'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.